Officer Dufus reporting for duty. It is 9.44 in the morning. I feel like I've been on the phone for an hour. But uh, yesterday was not a good day. So I was like, well, I'll address my uh, orthopedics thing today. So this should give you a hint as to how it went. <laughs> I was like, they need to know this, they need to know that. I, I was totally unprepared. So I, they were like, uh, I, I am not optimistic. I thought, well, I had a referral. They didn't give a damn about no referral. I am not optimistic uh, about seeing them. Um, you know, it's going to be a whole big thing. I think she said it's been a year. So they're probably going to want to, you know, make that money and redo all the tests on my leg. Maybe catch the damage that Jeff Wilhelm uh, did to my leg or if he did any damage. But it's going to be a whole big long process now because I thought like, you know, I, I thought I could call in and get an appointment. No. I have to, uh, I don't have any transportation, I don't have a fax machine, so I have to wait until uh, Diane, the very polite records clerk at Tri-County Orthopedics, which was the orthopedist I went to, I don't even remember when, they always ask you when, like you're supposed to like keep everything on file. Does anybody really do that? You know, like keep a book and like, I went to the doctor this date, I, I took this, day. I don't remember this. Yeah, I don't remember none of that shit. And anyways, um, so I have to uh, get this records clerk to send me these forms in the mail, sign these release forms, send them back to Tri-County for tests that are probably too old to be even of any use to them. Um, and um, they're probably going to do all new tests anyway, but it's just a process I have to go through. But, you know, two days getting here. Well, today's Thursday. Hopefully they'll get here by Saturday. She said she'd mail them out today. By the time I get them back, uh, um, by the time I get them to, uh, back to her, I don't know, it's going to be sometime next week. And then I guess I got to recall Omni. And I don't know. I'll fi I don't fucking know. <laughs> I can't think straight. Um, yeah. Anyways, it's a whole process. I'll figure it. I'll figure out the puzzle later. Uh, but yeah, get, I probably call them. No, they. No, no. The records clerk will probably be able to fax the records. It says uh, I. Request for treatment under the attention of somebody named Angie. She will probably do the. I'll probably get the records back to Diane. They will probably fax them into Omni. Then Omni might call me back or I might have to call them. I don't fucking know. Now this affects the way I have to play it with um, the people that referred me to them. Because I was just wanting to tell them to piss off. But now what I think I have to do is I think I have to call in uh, Dr. Mason's office who referred me to Omni Orthopedics and be like, I, I need to like reschedule down the road, you know, uh, I got like personal issues. I'll death in the family, I'll make something up and, uh, you know, try to like put it like way off in the future so I can still, I don't even know if it matters because I don't really know what I'm doing, obviously. And, um, you know, I, in case I need to have a primary care physician for me to get into Omni, which is all I care about. The primary care physicians can all take a short walk off a long pier into a muddy lake with prawns in it for all I care. Do not care about any of them people. So if I need to string them, I don't know if I need to string them along, like I'm going to be their patient in order for this all to work or whatever. And I, I've got zero expectations and zero hope. You know, like I said, man, I am a bad penny that people just pass along. I am like a, a, a bad credit risk. 
It's like, uh, oh man, look at this guy's medical history. Well, these other orthopedists didn't do shit. Well, this guy from the Cleveland Clinic in Medina, he wouldn't treat him at all. It's like, oh, what if we fuck this guy up? Can I sign a form or something saying that, like, you know, if you kill me accidentally, you know, I asked that before when I had trouble with doctors. I was like, can I sign some sort of release form, like, that says that whatever you do to me, they, it can't come back on you. That's like, uh, re relieves you of all liability. And it's like, there's no such form that exists in the medical community. And I'm like, why not? You can kill me. I don't care. You know, I'm already crippled up. If you, you fuck up my legs, I don't care. Blow my brains out and get this shit over with. I don't know, man. I just don't have a whole lot of hope that, you know, well, the person that I, uh, talk to on the phone it just amazes me that people you know I was like okay you got to be prepared you don't know who you're going to be dealing with but it just amazes me that people expect you to have all this information on file does anybody keep track of all their uh the times the dates the tests when who what where does anybody actually like do that like like what sort of Sheldon uh, OCD neurotic type person does that or is that normal behavior and I'm the weird one where I just go like to the doctor and be like oh went to the doctor and then I'll move on to the next doctor visit it's like I'm not keeping complete records I'm not a records clerk like Diane it's like I do not keep records and I don't know you know it's like I, I was like I already talked to you I ended the conversation by like bringing up COVID and saying well the COVID thing threw everything out of whack I actually had talked to you people before and um, you're ready to give me a referral from after I uh, got you're ready to give me an appointment after I got the referral from Dr. Cook I did not mention that Dr. Cook raped an 11 year old I found that not to be helpful in the when dealing with medical people um, yeah they're all aware of it anyway because it's big news around these parts and uh, so um, yeah, my head's spinning. Uh, and plus, like an hour and literally an hour and a half plus before that, I was taking pictures of cards, which is a very annoying process. You can see where I got my bendy light here in the background. Totally useless. Totally useless. It's, I just got a bunch of glare on my cards from it. It's like I, yeah. What you need, I think, is like to lay them flat on a surface with an overhead light. And that would mean I couldn't do it laying in bed which means I'd have to set something up in the living room and move all my stuff in the living room which means I would hear more noise there's a reason why I'm in the bedroom it's like because the stamping is minimized and my nerves are are better and when I'm not subjected to that so anyways yeah so tomorrow or maybe today I'll call up and be like, look, you know, I'm going to have to reschedule. I'll, I'll have to think of something. I want to reschedule my appointment coming up on the 20th, you know, for further down the road. I've got some family uh, issues to deal with. And uh, maybe I could tell them I have COVID. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe I'll tell them I have COVID and I'm contagious. No, they might want me to come in to test me for it. I don't know, man. It's just too confusing. It's, it's really hard to like do stuff like this when your head hurts and you haven't eaten and you're in a lot of pain. It's hard to do anything when you're in a lot of pain, like um, where you can't focus and think right. But it's like, like this woman wanted to know all this goddamn information. I'm like, I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. You're not going to see me um, unless I like you have tests from a year ago, like, you know. I could have been a woman a year ago and had a sex change. I mean, it's it's stupid. It's stupid medical bullshit that I'm used to. I, I guarantee you by the time I get into Omni, they're going to want all new tests and all this, like, these phone calls and calling Diane and Lynn and whoever the fuck I try to use names, Becky, Becky, Diane, Lynn, all these different people I just talked to. It's all a bunch of... Uh, about what it's worth except for Diane she will get the ball rolling and then you know but I mean the whole process she will get the stuff rolling 
and uh, yeah, mm. <laughs> whatever. Yesterday, man, I was just like in a black, hideous mood. And I started off the day in a very good way. I just made that gesture. I was like, oh, that's unusual. I thought, like, oh, I'll be relaxed and shit, and I'll be in a good mood, and I'll be able to make my calls and take care of my appointments. And, you know? No. It didn't work out that way at all. And, uh, yeah. I think the 27th is, um, when I have, like, my psychiatric nurse appointment where I can maybe talk to the guy about prescribing gabapentin for me. Um, I think. Or maybe... No, I don't think... I think... I think now that gabapentin and neurotin slash neurotin is a controlled substance, I think I may need a visit to, um, before I can get, like, a refill. Because they only give it to you a month at a time now. Before, like, you know, I get, like, bottles with three refills. That's why I had that giant bottle of 400 of them. You know, me being a generous idiot, um, I gave away, like, God knows how many of them things. I gave away, like, a whole bottle of, I think, 90 of them. And then I gave some out of the other bottle. And I didn't even know I was giving it to a smackhead. Um, which is, you know, that's not polite. I believe the politically... Uh, correct term nowadays is junkie. No, the politically correct term nowadays is uh, needle freak. No, that's not it. Um, um, I don't know what the politically correct term for somebody. Uh, uh, somebody with substance issues. The, how about this? The sobriety challenged. Because I'm like the physically challenged. Because you know I'm not a cripple. I'm physically challenged. So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that did not go. That was like way more difficult. I, I should know better. It's like, oh, this is why I put it off yesterday when I was in a really piss poor mood. And it's like today, headache or not or whatever. We're, you know, I'm doing this today and then getting the ball rolling. And it's like, dude, your your knees fucked. You're just gonna have to live with it at least for. A couple of months here before they even do anything at all I mean the first time I see them I'm gonna be like cortisone please shoot me not shoot me but shoot me like shoot that knee up dudes you know I need a little relief or like uh, I don't know about like the pain medications they tend to give you for something like this or nothing I really want to mess with so uh, yeah Neurontin doesn't knock it out, but it helps. Um, you just have, have to take you, know, you have to take a fair amount of it, which I take like three pills at a time because that's all I can afford to take. I've taken four at a time before, but um, yeah, like a high dose is probably like two thousand milligrams. Um, the minimum dose is like the pills I got, which are easily 100 milligrams. 400 milligrams is actually a light dose. I don't know what a moderate dose would be. But uh, when I talked to Dr. Rapist, he was like, uh, we can like hike you up to as high as 2,000 milligrams. I'm like, really? If we need to. And then when I, you know, when they gave me the shit in pain management, um, they were like, they gave me, they did, they went by the 100 milligram to thing too. And uh, they were, um, start, I don't know what they started me out at. I don't remember. Because I don't keep track of every medical fucking thing like I've been saying. Uh, I don't, you know, I thought she was going to ask me what color his eyes were. But it doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's just all a stupid process they have to put you through just because of um, legal things. You know, I can't give permission over the phone to uh, the records clerk, you know, because somebody might be trying to steal my medical records. I've always often wondered about that. Like, uh, why the hell would somebody want? I can understand, like, identity theft. Yeah, that I can understand. But why would you want to steal my medical records? I'm not running for political office. I don't give a fuck if you know about the fact that I've had epididymitis. 
give a shit about any of that or like my why would oh god I got him over a barrel now I know his I know his history it's like now I can blackmail him you had a surgery in 1984 you may not know who I am but I'm gonna tell everyone I'm like look I got scars to tell everybody you don't have to tell anybody <laughs> yeah but what about the epididymitis thing what were you doing fucking sheep I'm like no I just tend to get epididymitis because I got like to do a medical procedures and stuff on myself I'm gonna blackmail you with something I stole these records for <laughs> just, none of it makes any sense the world doesn't make any sense God help us all you know I mean I don't know if you watched that video of that, of, uh, that guy like getting that cop killed there's riots over that I mean this world don't make no damn sense you know there's a, nobody's upset at the caller they're they're mad at the cop you know they're, they're mad at, and nobody cares like over that there's like for a pick a picket line of like six people over uh, the Daniel Shaver shooting guy passes out in a goddamn Wendy's because uh, he's drunk off his ass in the drive-thru drunk driving and then punches cops in the face, steals their ta tasers, throws them around like rag dolls, and runs, and then shoots the taser at a cop, and then gets shot. And then people actually burn down the Wendy's. Later on, they set up in that, like, that became like a, uh, I don't know, just like a station, like a base for, like, protests. And those were the protests in Atlanta where they shot, a, a car approached, that was just trying to get home and uh, they they warned them to do a U-turn they were in the process of doing the U-turn apparently they didn't do it fast enough because uh, three or four people fired into the car killing an eight-year-old girl so the chain of events is drunk guy passed out in a Wendy's drive through uh, cops come wake him up real nice to him for like 40 minutes until he uh, beats the fuck out of him steals their taser and shoots at him with a taser so they shoot him and uh, because of that event it leads to the death of an 8 year old girl so the fact that the medical community doesn't make any sense just means that it's part of a larger whole that doesn't make any sense the world and human beings make no sense we are not logical creatures we are as one writer called it uh, the ins what's he call it? Uh, the insane naked ape. <laughs> That's what we are. That's what the human race is as a whole. It's a bunch of apes blundering around that uh, uh, trying to figure out how to navigate that. Except for present company, accepted as always. You know, I assume I am talking to sane, rational people. Um, at all times I'm talking about them other sons of bitches not us so uh, yeah I mean you got all this bureaucracy you have to deal with with the medical community and I could tell you story upon story upon story and have of like just ridiculous stupid uh, exchanges between me and the medical community so you know it's like I should have. Been, I, I don't know why I wasn't prepared for rigmarole. I thought it was just going to be real easy. And it's like um, the truth of the matter is, is I didn't have a rigmarole from these people before. And that's um, and like I said, uh, when I got the referral, I guess a rapist doctor carries more clout than just a regular doctor. So when I got the referral from the rapist doctor they called me in like three days well I got the referral from this guy who is probably just a thief or something or like I don't know cheats on his taxes and it's not like you know how they have, have the echelon of criminals in prison and stuff he's not you know he's... anyway this guy he comes in and uh, they don't call me I gotta like bug them you know this isn't two weeks after the fact this is um, 23 days after the, the guy told me that they would give me a referral three days with the rapist 23 days uh, before um, I get any love from that uh, from this current doctor that I'm going going to so 
you know, and then like, as you saw in the last video, she's like, well, I sent the referral in on the 30th. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. You, even if you sent it in on the 30th, that means like I was in there on the 22nd and you guys said you'd send in the referral. You took eight days to send in a fucking referral, even if you did it on the 30th. 30th and I don't believe that you did it on the 30th. And if you were going to do it that way, why didn't you give me a phone number to call the people? Think about that. That's how I know she's lying. Is because uh, if that's really the way it worked, they'd give me the phone number to the office of who they were referring me to and say, call this number. Now, maybe that is the way things work, but they didn't do that. Maybe that's the, thing, the way their office, whatever it is, I had no number to call. I had no idea whether they sent in the referral or not. And even if, if she's lying about sending it in on the 30th, that's eight days after I was told that they would do it. So fuck those people. Short pier piranhas. They may, they may they be eaten to the bone. Don't like any of them. So, yeah. I, I, this is not an enviable position to be put in. I thought about like... Uh, calling my care source manager to see if she could help me out. And I was like, nah, I'll just make them. You know, once I was mired in t to talking to Becky and Lynn and Juliet and Romeo and all these other motherfuckers, I figured like, yeah, let's just ride this out. I was like, maybe if I call my care source manager, and she didn't have nothing to do. Because she'll talk to me on the phone for like an hour and a half because she's bored. Uh, either that or she finds me fascinating or likes the sound of my voice. I don't know. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I got to go. I got, you know, I got, I got a not life to get back to. You know, I'm, I'm literally like saying, hey, I got to go. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> apparently she has time to kill. So I'm saying she could have done some of this stuff for me. Don't be sensitive teeth. I got enough problems. Don't be bothering me. Yeah. That's not cool. Stop it. The last thing I need to do is go to the dentist and they'll be like, why haven't you been wearing your uh, uh, dental appliances we crafted for you? It's like, because uh, it's just a pain in the ass to me. And I got to like take them out every time I eat. And I can't eat with them anyway without pain. It's like maybe, you know, I have extra sensitive gums or something. Maybe it's a CRPS thing. I don't know. All I know is I tried to eat something like marshmallows and it hurt and as a matter of fact these two caps in front they're still sensitive so i don't know what the hell is going on with my mouth don't fucking care uh yeah i was supposed to like have a cleaning or make an appointment for a cleaning with them like months ago i was like nah i don't think so i think it's kind of more uh i don't know germane to my existence that uh my knee feels like there's a bunch of wolverines the size of let's make them shrews that there's if you know about shrews there's a bunch of ravenous shrews chewing away at the uh joint in my right leg at this moment it's kind of like seems more important than whether i'm getting a, my teeth cleaned or whatever i mean the, the tooth thing has kind of sailed that horse is kind of already out of the barn like uh, at least 9, 10, or 11 of them horses are out of the barn and they ain't coming back. So, uh, yeah, it's like just part of the, it's just part of the general disaster of the last uh, seven years. When I moved here to this accursed place, uh, I was missing one tooth. All this happened since I moved here uh, 10 years ago. It wasn't like I was not going to the dentist. And I could run through this stories about the necrotic tooth and how it took them like 18 months to get a necrotic tooth out of my head. And the story about how that affected, like, when I, w I was doing really well. Uh, when I initially tried to quit uh, benzos, as in Xanax, and I was down to, like, literally down to a quarter of Xanax a day. But I had to go to an appointment because the dumbasses would not pull out my necrotic tooth 
for 18 months I carried that around in my head it was either misdiagnosed or there was always something that was keeping it I'm carrying around a dead tooth in my, in my head it's over here actually I remember because that's where it hurt was like right here and uh, yeah so naturally I up my uh, dosage because withdrawal and oral surgery kind of doesn't mix very well and I'm going through withdrawal you know but I'm like yeah, I'm hanging in there uh, I'm doing really good and I was like oh this is probably gonna only take me about three months and uh, that is why that guy's timing on uh, like the, the doctor that's soon to be uh, passed around in prison um, his timing was like really bad when he halved my dose is because I had that oral surgery like hanging off and like a month and a half down the road and I went from uh, a milligram of Xanax a day to a quarter of a milligram a day now mind you I was suffering but it was going really well and then uh, I don't even kindling happened because I had, I, I had uh, pills saved up and I had to take them to get me through the oral surgery because that's just not a doable thing. I mean, to be in a like, benzo withdrawal and go to a strange city by yourself, no moral support, nobody there holding your hand, a place you've never been before to have oral surgery, and it's like uh, a long trip to boot. So you're just every you're going through all this new shit all you want is like a quiet secure safe environment so you can be like uh wait out the miserable hours while you're in withdrawal you know um and so that's yeah that's all news anyway that i've talked about before my voice is horrible and uh it sounds horrible to me anyway and I feel awful and that was inordinately stressful and annoying I just I, I, I'm never going to do that I'm sorry I'm just never going to write down like okay June 25th of 2018 I saw this guy I'll never have like a little ledger so when they ask me these questions I can be aha his eyes were blue you know you want to know all these like details when did you have this test when was this done when was that done? like nine I'm not I'm not a girl uh, like writing things down in my diary you know uh, I guess I kind of have a video journal of these videos if I wanted to like can you hold on for like I don't know a week while I sort through all my videos and find out this information that you're asking me ma'am <laughs> I'll put you on hold for a week here yeah so I'm not doing that either it's like uh, I don't know why I had the idea that that was going to be an easy call like uh, I figured they'd ask me some questions and they might want to know like a, a few things not everything just a few things about like who have you seen before what's the problem with your knee I was vague about it I just said I've, I've got a problem with my knee and uh, Dr. Mason who I've never seen by the way never seen the guy I've just seen his uh, his uh Batman if he's Batman I, I saw his Robin which if you saw the guy it's kind of funny um, I, whoever his whoever his minion is I saw I never even saw Dr. Mason guy but I said the Dr. Mason guy said there's a problem with my knee and uh, that you guys might be able to help me and I tried to be like uh, folksy and down to earth and she wasn't having none of it man she just wanted to know like uh, the sexual uh, inclinations and predilections of my last 15 doctors it's like I can only tell you about the one because the other ones I really don't know about and I'm not interested actually I can tell you about two because one guy was a sexaholic that had the 13 kids that got murdered and then the other guy uh, I don't know if the other, I know the other guy was wealthy but he never dressed like it because I know he owned a, a lot of property the uh guy who's in jail uh, I don't like to overuse that term you know the rapist doctor but you know what I'm talking about 
but he was he was actually talking because I was talking about my landlord situation and how it was stressing me out and how there was drugs being sold out of my building and all this crap and uh, he was like yeah I own some properties and he's like uh, was elaborating on it. I'm like you can see you're a doctor and you own pro rental properties so you're getting a rental you know because that's they don't, that's a lucrative thing um, that's why being a landlord's like in general a pain in the ass so that is why people do it is you make it a big money that way oh coffee why aren't there, why isn't there more of you no I'm gonna try to uh, use this to calm down instead of like uh taking a volume because I took a volume when I uh, woke up this morning I'm like see I picked up my prescription on the 8th is today the 15th or the 14th I don't know but 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th 15th if it is indeed the 15th I am eight days ahead on my prescription which amounts to 24 pills ahead which is pretty cool because I haven't I, I've got uh, two pills left in my old bottle and I haven't tapped into my new bottle yet at all which I picked up on the 8th which was ready actually on the 7th but I couldn't get it till the 8th now I have an aid worker coming here today so I don't know what I'm going to do with her uh, maybe I'll make her clean the bathroom. I have to. I I, I gotta write this down. I have a pen. This is how I remember things. This is my organ. She's asking me questions about like uh, um, you know, doctor's appointments I had six months ago. This is how I remember things. Nine volt battery. I write it on my hand that's how I remember things so like when she comes I'll be like what's this on my hand oh yeah I need you to buy me a 9 volt battery because I need to get the scale up and running I have a postal scale from uh, back in my uh, card selling days in the mid 2000s so you know I, I don't I don't know how to do this stuff but I'm gonna try to figure it out like uh, weigh the packages you know if I can get the dimensions of the package and the weight of the package you know and uh, put that information in for each package or, you know but anyways it's, it's that's I was looking at looking into it as far as like using the, the eBay shipping thing also if you ship a whole bunch of stuff at once you get like a discount I don't know how they work that out that's between them and the post office or whatever but nine volt battery or my uh, old postal scale to see if it still works and uh yeah then i can i took a lot of pictures in, in an hour and a half but you have to do it very meticulously and you have to do it with rubber gloves and you have to get the lighting right and take good pictures now i don't know what the pictures look like yet i haven't put them in the computer they're on this but i did good work I think and uh, I just took pictures of uh, this Chester and Herbert fellow like this card there's only 10 of them some guy wants a hundred bucks for this one card whether he'll, you can get a hundred bucks or not I don't know but there's only 10 of them and uh, these cards are selling really well right now I'm gonna put up 10 day auctions maximum exposure and uh, whatever happens, happens. I set it to go off 15 minutes before the football game unless COVID screws me over again. And they reschedule the game. You know, it's 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 been fucking with the NFL schedule. We had a Tuesday night football game. Who even heard of a Tuesday night football game? So um, hopefully that'll work out. But regardless, um, I will uh, be working on getting rid of these cards. A big game coming up between the Browns and the Steelers. If the Browns can somehow manage to beat the Steelers, 
or if Baker Mayfield can manage not to look like shit, uh, I can work on getting rid of his cards. And uh, Chubb, of course, is still on the injured reserve. That that's like will be a major deal if he gets back and is his old self. He did he had an MCL strain slash tear, which minor tearing, you know. Uh, I'm thinking they're probably setting for six weeks. But yeah, I was even like looking at these auctions and I'm like, you know what? I'm tempted to buy these. And I'm like, nope, no more cards. I don't, I just have, all I have to do is think about how much I hate selling cards and how much of a pain in the ass it is. But see, if I like selling cards, I can make money doing this. Lots of money. But, uh, you, you know, it's like, you just went out of it too stressed out I have to deal with uh, Dr. Madness and um, talking to all these people on the phone about this that and the other and uh, I'm trying just to get basic things done and yeah the one woman was almost laughing at me and it's like like uh, how prepared do, you, do people actually like call you up and be like where were you on the date date of uh, July twenty third, nineteen hundred and seventeen? There's there's some Alex Harvey remake song from Framed. Uh, I think um, one one iPod man or one eyed iPod or I don't know. I can't remember your name, dude. I'm sorry, but you're the guy that was uh, corrected me on the uh, Let It Bleed reference. But uh, anyways, it's like I mean. I did not expect that, but she was like a little bit condescending toward me, which I'm sensitive. I can't help it. It's the it's the benzo thing and the nerves thing and the fact that my knee is feeling like there's tiny little uh, wolverines that look like shrews inside of it chewing at my kneecaps. It's just I, I, well, I only have the one, and yeah, and, and the knee in question. The other leg hurts, but it's not the same as that one. But anyways. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. High anxiety. Because this is like, this is my life we're talking about here. You know, if they don't do something for this knee, man, they ain't going to be no me. Like this. So this is serious, like life and death type shit for me to like work this around. I can only hang in there for so long. I mean, I've had this hideous knee for six months fucking years trying to get something done about it after a while besides the frustration level uh you just yeah it's like you're you're like you know it's torquemada you're like i confess i confess i give you know uh i uh i i failed to renounce satan and all his works you know go ahead and uh, burn me at the stake over there you know i mean the Spanish Inquisition that's being done on me by my knee for these six years, man, I'm going to break sooner or later. It's just, yeah, it's the amount of stress that that puts you under. I mean, you have to understand, I've had screws driven in my head. This, when I say this hurts, this fucking hurts. And it's like, it don't ever stop. It's just, it gives me a break. And uh, it only is horrifyingly painful instead of gut-wrenchingly painful. That's, that's the spectrum in this thing. And then, like, walking on it, you know. I gotta make myself walk on it, I guess. Uh, for my heart. For the sake of my heart, I don't know. Like, it, yeah. If I took, like, a tape measure and wrapped it around there, I bet you it's three inches bigger around than the other knee. It's really looking hideously swollen right now. Like, like, yeah. This is like a lot of experience with dealing with pain. That doesn't mean I have a high pain. I don't consider myself to have a high pain tolerance. I just have a certain way of dealing with pain. I've seen people with high pain tolerances, you know. My dad pulled out his own tooth. I could not do that. No way in fucking hell. Uh, my niece who was in the army who kicks people in France <laughs> she had her teeth drilled without Novocaine because she wanted to go dancing 
not me. My brother, uh, he gets stung by like yellow jacket hornets and like keeps working and doesn't stop. Not me. He like swats them like mosquitoes. And I was like, that one time he got attacked by a wasp and a hornet simultaneously. And I'm like, did you quit working? He goes, yeah. I'm like, so it takes like, uh, uh, you gotta get ganged up on because he'll just keep working. He doesn't like be like, oh fuck, he just got stung by a hornet, you know. So the normal reaction of, Pack! like when I got, uh, I grabbed the wasp and it, uh, I reached inside this tent as a kid we had, and uh, I caught a wasp in between. Like that's a bad place to get stung, but right here, and it zapped at me like three times, man. I was hopping around like a fucking uh, frog on PCP in the yard, just just ah. My mom was yelling out the window, what's wrong with you? And I'm just like, ah, yelling obscenities. And just just literally hopping around and shit. And my brother would be like, fuck, god damn it, where's my hammer? And just keep working. Like, I, I don't have a high pain tolerance. It's just like I got a lot of experience dealing with pain. I got allodynia, which amplifies uh, normal things into painful things, like they explained in that one video, like, with the Q-tip. The Q-tip will make me wince if you rub it across certain parts of me. Um, so, actually, you know, that probably intensifies the amount of pain that I feel. The, point, the whole point is, like, if I don't get something done, I'm pretty, you know, the that's why I'm nervous and I'm hyper and I'm edgy and I'm acting like this is because this is a big deal. This is the last orthopedist on the list that my insurance will take. If uh, I don't get any relief from these people or any help from these people and that receptionist did not leave me a lot of hope if she's a reflection of the office because she did not seem like a very nice person. Uh, so like if I don't if I, if I don't get help from these people this knee and me you know till death do us part yeah, it's like I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna be stuck with it I, I mean I, I'm, I walk already I already walk like a deformed ostrich and it's like like I don't know you know there's gonna be untold untold medical horrors in my future if I go about this from like a CRPS perspective and um, if if like you going somewhere involves like um, nervousness, generalized anxiety, benzosensitivity and allodynia where you have to like uh, wrap like a bandage around your metal and problems with uh, excretory control we'll call it and um walking in general uh, yeah that means I'm going to have to go to all these appointments with all these considerations and it's just going to be like stress and torture and like uh, physical mental and emotional torture and that's looking on the bright side <laughs> it's like if they will try to help me they might not try to help me at all and then what, you know, without hope, you ain't got much. And once you reach that hopelessness point, you know, even if you have to lie to yourself, uh, then, then you start thinking about the nine millimeter aspirin. Because once you reach that point of like, like, I mean, I've had six years of this. I've had medical procedures done on my knee. I've had cortisone pills, cortisone injections. I've seen three different orthopedists. I've, uh, you know, the Cleveland clinics, uh, rejected me. Their orthopedist rejected me. So they're going to probably get around to finding that out. And that's probably going to be like, well, the Cleveland goddamn clinic, you know, that's like a, they're a big deal. So not, what am I going to do? You know, it's not an enviable, enviable spot to be in at all. And I happen to enjoy, I enjoy my, myself, I, I enjoy my mind, I like myself. It's a very important thing. 
I enjoy my own company. Thank God I don't have any other company. But yeah, it's not that I don't find, I can find pleasure in the simplest things. And, uh, you know, I'm at peace with myself. I can sit here and listen to a book. But if I'm being tortured, uh, your uh, equanimity of mind doesn't really matter all that much if you're like in severe, hideous pain. I mean, nobody has a peace of mind and uh, tranquility and inner peace when they have a raging fucking toothache. That's you know, kind of what my leg, my knee is. It's just a toothache in my, it's in my knee. And uh, it just varies in intensity. And it's been going on now and getting steadily worse for years and years and years. And it started out like to where it was just painful, but I could use it. And then it got more painful. And then I started to affect the function of it. It, just, it wasn't always like at the levels it's at now. It's been like a, a graph going down, down, down. Uh, you know, it started out like... Uh, well, that's weird. I got this fucking pain. I don't know what this is about. I think it's from when I, from riding a bicycle and having the pedal whack me in the back of the leg. And then it went from that to uh, now, what it is now, which is uh, I get up and I stagger into the wall every morning. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty much housebound. I'm going to shut in. So I, thought I was talking to my brother last night. And, uh, yeah. I finally was able to buy minutes for that other phone. It only took like 10 fucking tries. That government phone. And I had to buy minutes for this phone because I couldn't buy minutes for that phone. So, you know, I used up all the minutes on my spare phone. Because I couldn't buy minutes, unlimited minutes for my government phone. So I have to, I have, to have two phones because the one's unreliable. Obviously. So, yeah. So 500 minutes on this thing cost me uh, 16 bucks, 15 bucks with some tax and then 250 additional minutes on the government phone cost me uh, $5 and some tax so um, yeah I get like 350 free minutes every um, 23rd of each month 350 minutes uh, yeah, we had, I had a short chat with my brother that lasted 50 minutes last night, so, uh, like I said, I'm speedy, speedy Gonzalez verbally compared to my brother, and I talk slow and thoughtfully, generally speaking, unless I'm like I am now, which is all torqued up and, uh, anxious and angry and worried, you know, because, like, if I can't get something going, at least I'm getting the ball rolling. I look at it that way. I'm getting, I'm getting the ball rolling, at least, as far as uh, Omni Orthopedics. It's like, they may not be able to help me, or they might not want to help me, or they might be like, uh, yeah, we're not touching it. They might be like that one guy, like, you're a leper. I'm like a medical leper. Uh, you got too much wrong with you, therefore, not fucking with you. I'm like, like I said, I wish there was a release form that said, yeah, I know I am severely fucked up and whatever the doctors do to me, I don't give a fuck and will not sue them. Signed, yours truly. You know, I actually asked once if there was, well, that's when I was in, um, I'm going to get my heart shocked. And I was like, you shocked, you shocked, you shocked my heart here before, uh, when I wasn't on a blood thinner in this very room oh, why aren't you doing it now and they had no answer for that and just blah 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 around the question and uh they're like you're gonna have to have, we're gonna have to take you upstairs which means hospital stay which means three to five days and uh get your blood thinned out and monitor you monitor you and torture you in various ways first before we can do anything with you and i'm like okay is there a paper I can sign that absolves you of any wrongdoing in case things do not go well when you shock me? And they were like, nope. No such form exists. I was like, damn. What if I, being of sound mind, maybe that's it. They're like, you're not of sound mind. But I had an aunt that got released from the hospital, which too early 
on her say so while she was first of all she's old and second of all she was stoned at the time and she was able to sign herself out of the hospital early and uh, what happened was is she had um, something uh, vascular happen I forget the name of it that threw her in the hospital and damn near killed her and put her in like severe horrible pain and she should never have been allowed to sign herself out of the hospital she was non corpus menti or whatever that phrase is I can't think of right now she was not of sound mind so you know maybe maybe if I had somebody in there that was of sound mind maybe she's lying to me about no such form exists but I bet you no such form exists because uh, lawyers would say uh we do not care if um, his uh, legal guardian signed for it, or we do not care. They were not; uh, they are not medical people. They don't know. We want to make some money, and they want to make some money, you know, because of that, that lit litigiousness of our society. It really fucks things up a lot. People have just too late now, man. That bridge has already been burned. But yeah. That cost, like I said, that cost me my first job when people started to be like suing over it, trying to get get trying to get paid over everything, no matter whose fault at fault. You know, it's like oh, I got hurt. Well, you know, yeah, the person that hurt you, they they did not have any intention of doing anything but helping you. I don't care. I got hurt. I want money. And then like somehow, uh, the legal the way the legal system works, it's like. Yeah, you do deserve money if you got hurt, you know. It's like, uh, yeah, well, what if that's nobody's fault and it's just something that ha don't matter. There was other people involved and you ended up fucked up. Uh, doesn't matter. You can sue the company, you can sue the doctor, you can sue the your workplace, you can sue whoever. Sue, sue, sue. Sue, 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 Dio. So we got this uh, society now where, like, nobody trusts anybody. And like, uh, yeah. And um, I got, like I said, I got fired from my first job I ever had because the guy was worried about my dad, who he's known his whole life, suing him because I cut my finger. And it's like I didn't even think nothing about it. It's like, man, I hurt myself worse than that last week. <laughs> I remember I had that cut on my hand, and I was playing an ar arcade game. And I got thrown out of an arcade. This is way back when they had arcades, and I, uh, people couldn't sit off, sit home, and uh, play video games. But I was like mad at this game, and I was punching it. And I didn't realize I was bleeding all over the game. But yeah, they threw me out. They should have threw me out for like giving, uh, putting other uh, teenagers at risk for hepatitis, or like just I, I had I, there was like blood all over that machine. I realized. You know, as I was getting kicked out, I looked down and I was like, oh, I've been, you know, because one of the deals where you work the knob and I had like cut my hand uh, at my first job. I was like 15 years old and uh, yeah, it was, I was working these knobs and shit and I was bleeding all over the machine and didn't realize it. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're going to get a surprise. <laughs> you have to clean up blood. <laughs> and I got thrown out. I even remember the shirt that I was wearing that day. That was a memorable day. Because I had a, I, I, I was like proud of my physique or whatever. Because I was 15 years old. I got my first uh, uh, heavy dose of testosterone. And I was all cut and muscular and shit. I was muscular. And uh, so I was wearing this red and white tank top that had little tiny feet. Like, you know, in patterns on it. I remember, I remember what that looked like. I also got sunburnt really bad in that tank top. So that was not my lucky tank top in any way, shape, or form. But I was wearing like a, a would, they, would they call that an A shirt now? I mean, we just call them tank tops. You know where you, they're tank tops. You show off your muscles. I don't know what the hell. That's what we call them. It had little, these little tiny like footprints all over it in a pattern. It was red and yellow. I remember what I was wearing that day. And I remember bleeding all over that machine. But yeah, that's just the world we live in, man. Trust is like... A very precious commodity that's why like uh, betrayal uh, hits me especially hard among family member members because there's so little trust and it takes so long to develop trust among people and then when they fuck you over 
Yeah, it's, it's upsetting. I did not feel portrayed by my doctor, you know, but it was like, it did like threw me for a loop that I went and saw that guy for five years and now he's in jail. But I didn't know like, yeah, it's not so much that dude's, you're gonna have to find a new doctor. You're gonna have to go through physicals. This guy like lets you keep your clothes on most of the time. The rapist lets you keep your clothes on most of the time. And uh, I believe I made that joke before though. And uh, I don't remember having no thorough physicals with that guy. I would just go to see him and then complain about whatever was bothering me and we'd address that, you know. It's like, uh, yeah. So, I'm uh, not sure what to do now. I don't know what time uh, the large one is coming. I don't know what to tell her to do, but I don't want to have to deal with her. I was thinking about, like, when she was cleaning my refrigerator door, it's like, okay, she goes to other people's houses, the COVID thing's still running around. Uh, is this really a good idea, having her clean my refrigerator? I know she's got a mask on and gloves, but, like, you know, she's actually, like, that far away from my food that I eat. It's like, maybe that wasn't, like, a wise thing to do. I was talking about my nasty refrigerator door with the uh, something smelly in the door for like ever. I just don't put things there. Where, wherever that like grayish brown streak is, just don't put things by there. Uh, yeah. I've, in the old days when I had a body that worked, I cleaned refrigerators. I did all kind of housework. You got to do that shit. You live alone. Ain't nobody else to do it, there to do it for you. So I don't know how to clean a refrigerator. I don't know how to clean an oven. I know how to clean stuff. I just can't do it. But yeah, I'm thinking now I'm just going to send her out of the house. I'm irritated. I'm just going to send her out of the house and make, give her busy work of some kind. I'll send her to get that battery. Don't forget. Send her to get that battery. And uh, uh, some potato chips. Some more potato chips. Uh... What else? I don't know. I don't know. I could just tell her. I'll just give her the wink, wink, nod, nod thing and tell her to dick around for an hour and a half, make your money. Leave my bathroom filthy until I'm mellowed out. I don't want to be like, uh, yeah. Plus, I might have to buy like cleanser. She might be like, oh, I need. I mean, I think I have all the tools that you would need to clean but sometimes they're like they don't yeah they don't buy your mops I got a mop but that's just an example like they're not gonna buy a mop for you and clean your house so uh you know it might cost me money anyways I don't know I wish I could do it myself uh I think I'm, I'm nowhere near calm down I'm just, yeah, this is a nightmare, and now my teeth are going to be sensitive at me, now I'm just going to pretend like, uh, that's not there, or maybe like, uh, dig out some more gel or something, I don't know, who knows what the hell's going on, yeah, I still say I'm too young to be going through all this bullshit, I'm 52. I should be one of them dudes that is like hanging out in the bar, hitting on women that are way too young for them. That's what I should be doing. Not right now. It's kind of early in the morning for that, you know. You're not going to, you don't want to see what crawls into a bar at 11 a.m. You know, nothing more, like uh, Dave Chappelle said, the famous racist. He said, uh, there's nothing more depressing than being in a strip club in the daytime. And bars, same thing. I should be like um, wearing clothes that are like out of fashion, thinking I'm cool. Um, maybe uh, blowing my money on Rogaine instead of the situation that I'm in now. I'm 52 years old. 
I don't consider that old. I guess that's not old in today's society. It's like like this being an old man shit, losing all your teeth, losing your ability to walk, and having these old man problems. It's really, it's it's not you know it's just the way life works, but it's not cool. Not cool, God. I mean, I understand like I went through all that physical shit. And I'm not in a wheelchair, and that's cool. And I'm not a quadriplegic, and that's cool. And uh, I can still walk a little bit. That's pretty good. And stuff. But uh, this whole thing of the last 10 years has been not good. And uh, the heart trouble at 36, come on, man. I mean, I, everybody that I knew had worse health habits than me. Literally, I, I used to know a fair amount of people. Everybody that I knew smoked more than me, drank more than me, did more drugs more than me, were lazier than me. They could never keep up with me physically as far as cardio. And I'm the guy that gets the, the heart trouble. That's not right. So, wah, wah, and double wah. 52 years old, like I said, I should be hitting on some 30 year olds in, in a bar tonight. I shouldn't be sitting here worrying, wondering, like laying in bed in agony, wondering, like, uh, I'm on my last orthopedist, what should I do? Or wondering how long that's going to be until I snap and can't take it no more, as far as, uh, you know, physical woes. And, uh, yeah, I'm not anywhere near cool at the moment. And um, I've probably been talking for an hour. I'm talking uh, what for me is rapidly, which for other people maybe is not so rapidly. I don't know. But uh, I think I'm done. I don't think this is... Uh, Let's see if I can squint. I think it says 102 minutes. Or an hour and two minutes. 102 minutes. Or way be. An hour and two minutes. Yeah. Six years of having a bad leg and asking for help. You know. I don't remember when I had my first uh, cortisone injections. But that was probably two, three years ago. I wasn't, I couldn't have been in that bad of shape, like I said, because I got that one video on, on here where I pushed a bike home. It almost killed me, true. But I pushed a 100 pound bike home from my doctor's office, which is only a third of a mile away, but I couldn't push it across the room, no. So, like I said, I don't keep track of the past, like, you know. To me, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to look to the, toward the future. The past is the past. I don't keep track of like doctors. I don't even keep track of like um, my general decline. That's kind of been my philosophy of dealing with CRPS is like uh, just live your life, don't dwell on it, move forward, look to try to live in the moment. Don't, you know, don't dwell on past things, you know. So when they ask me like, uh, what doctor did you have a year ago? Or what where did you have the test? I'm like, yeah. You're asking a benzo head that didn't uh, eat breakfast and uh, doesn't really keep track of those kind of things to call up information from his memory. I did try. And then when she's like, let me uh, put you on hold for a second, I looked it up and I was like, oh, Altman West, if it helps, is where I had that. And uh, she was just like, so... And like, just, I think she was just like consulting somebody of like what procedure to go through or what I needed to do, you know. Yeah, yeah I hate all of it, man. Uh, being an adult sucks. Being by yourself, crippled up and an adult, doubly sucks. And, uh, living here sucks and this building being trapped inside all the time sucks 
talked to my brother last night and uh yeah, I love that I love that dude but yeah, he is interested in himself and yeah. going to my uh family for emotional support sort of like petting an alligator it just doesn't make any sense at all it's like trying to scratch an alligator between the ears which I've been in a canoe in the water with alligators that's terrifying but alligators on land they don't scare me at all I'm I guess people tell me they should scare me but no nah, I just I walk right up to them they know they know they know who's boss. You know, I don't give a fuck about no alligator. So I walked right up to him in South Carolina. Yeah, you know, I was like, let me see how close I can get to him. The answer is not very because they're gonna run away from you. But it's like the person I was with is like, oh shit, it's crazy Steve is being crazy Steve again. You're like, man, don't do that, man. Don't don't make me watch that. I'm like, sorry. I'm gonna sneak up on him like an engine. There's a couple of six to eight feet alligators. They weren't even big. The biggest one, maybe eight feet, was the big one. I don't know, they didn't look very big to me. Maybe they looked bigger if I would have got closer to them, and they probably would have looked a lot bigger if they started running at me. But uh, yeah, they did exactly what I expect wild animals to do. But now, when you're in the water with them, and that's their home territory, and you're like in a canoe. And it's very deep water and you can't swim anyway and you're looking over here and you can see an, an alligator sunning itself uh, on a log like halfway in, in the water and halfway out of the water and then you can look over there and you see another alligator that's bigger than the first alligator and then you look down further downstream and you're looking at three or four alligators in your near future that are like in the way of the canoe swimming in the water and then you look down in the water and you can see all the way to the bottom and you can see it's about 14 feet deep and you can't swim. That kind of concerned me a little bit. It made for an exciting canoe trip though. Uh, because canoes have a tendency to tip over. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Eh. Eh, I had some impetuosity in my youth. I think I was in my 30s actually. I went down there for a Yeah, that was right around 9-11, uh, so that was like 19, 18 years ago. I know 9-11 had already happened, so that was like 2002, 2000. Yeah, it was probably 2002. When, uh, so that would make me, eight, what's, eight, what's 52 minus 18? 34, that would make me 34. It made me prime. There's a picture of me. I did talk to my brother about sending me pictures and looking up pictures last night. I don't know if he'll do it. He's kind of focused on his fishing trip coming up on Friday. I'm going to nag at him until he sends me them pictures. So, um, yeah, he wasn't very interested in what I was talking about. I reminded him of how, like, uh, we almost all got pre-aborted because uh, our dad was, like, 20 years old and hitch, hitchhiked with a uh, drunk guy and got it in, in a car with a drunk guy driving and he was involved in a head-on collision. I don't know how they made windshields back in the day or whatever, but he flew through the windshield. Maybe when the car crumpled, the windshield popped and that's what, but anyways, he was thrown clear of the collision. The other guy, they took out in pieces. I, he's like, yeah, I seem to remember that. And I was like, I don't know where that picture is, but I'd like to have that picture. And he goes, I seem to actually remember the picture. We, you know, I was able to keep his attention for a little while before it turned back to him. Um. So yeah, there's hope of me getting those, uh, getting some pictures off him. Um, but there, there's a picture of me, like we had drunk, some, maybe a lot. And they thought it would be funny to t take a picture of me. I had already, like, dressed and everything. They, there's a funny picture of me. 
uh, with like full mustache and uh, what do they call that? Soul patch. Big head of hair. And uh, just waking up like like walking out of the room and they waited for me to snap a picture of me because they knew I wasn't really good at drinking. And I'm like, I look like, uh, I look like a very handsome zombie. But my brother wouldn't have that picture. Somebody else has got that picture. So, yeah, I'll have to look through the pictures that I got here and see what I got here. That's pictures of me when I was younger, if that would be of interest to the uh, my uh, 20 or so loyal followers. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think I'm on. I think I'm ready to to uh, concede to the uh, volume and just uh, I'm supposed to take three a day supposedly anyway and like I said I'm way ahead 24 pills ahead so it's not a big deal I guess maybe if I chill I can take some more pictures because I have endless See, I'll bend the camera down here a little bit. You can see. First, you'll see the hideous thing I've been laying on. I have endless amounts of cards to take pictures of. I don't know what that looks like because I don't have my glasses on. Why am I whispering? I'll come over here. Let's see what that looks like. I, need to put, I should put my glasses on before I did that. This is the. Uh, wretched thing I've been sleeping on. I don't even have a pillow slip on my pillow. I got a bunch of cards and these are the little card stands and stuff so maybe I can go back to doing that. Ooh. Maybe I should maybe I should have put my glasses on before I move this around. Because some of those cards I took a picture of aren't protected in hard cases. You alright there fellas? This could go for some good money. Mm. Sorry. But, uh, man's got to get paid, you know. Okay. I didn't hurt that. I just have, like, piles of cards here that I took pictures of. Okay. Alright, I think I'm done. And, uh, yeah. I'll rewatch this for my own amusement while I, after I take a volume and just wait for the aid worker to get here and then give her some money to get rid of her and remember to buy that I will even forget when I write stuff on my hand because uh, you know how they say I know it like the back of my hand I don't really know the back of my hand all that well so yeah I will have to make a list and write that on the list but yeah that's how I remember stuff then like sometimes though I'll wash my hands and then I'll wash off my notes. I'll have like several things written down on my hand. And uh, yeah, like I'm in the movie Memento. And I'll, I'll like, oh shit. How the hell am I going to remember what was written there now? Now it's just all like a, a, a smudge. <laughs> what, what was I supposed to buy? Anyways, uh, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.